Welcome everybody, welcome. My name is Mihalis, so as some of you know. I'm here at the Fully Botanical Show Garden. Today we're gonna walk through the garden in the snow after a blizzard-like storm where there's tons of snow covering all the plants. And as a new type of situation, we're gonna have to discover together how to deal with the snow covering our plants, seedlings and pathways, uh, what types of salts we could use. I recommend none, to be honest with you. Um, and if you have any questions, please just uh, leave it in the comment section so that I can answer them for you. Please follow the North Brooklyn Parks Alliance account because we're transforming parks and making them more sustainable, eco-friendly, and uh, helpful for pollinators. So let's go. So here we are. Topiaries are in general uh, what you what you see that is like typically English gardening uh, shrubs that are shaped into very controlled shapes. It could be square, round, or other ornate uh, animal shaped uh, figurines and such. One downside they have because they are trimmed to be so compact, they have little branches at the edges which make them very fragile. So as you see here, after the snow, these ewes have really been um, overpowered by the weight of the snow because they have been formed into topiaries to create this hedge along the side of the fully garden. So what we would have to do is really try to get all this snow out of here to prevent any more damage. And evergreens such as this yew produce natural antifreeze in them. So you don't have to worry that the snow will actually freeze them and damage them and kill them. The main problem with so much snow on topiary evergreens such as this use is that they will break them with the weight so that's something you need to be wary when you're spending so much time creating topiaries and instead of doing topiaries you can have hollies as fences over here so hollies for example as topiaries which are native trees and produce wonderful berries for birds through through the year really because these some of these berries will 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 stay on the plant through spring and more of them will be produced by the summer and it constantly produces uh, food for wildlife so polis for example have stronger stems that don't get so bothered by the snow so it is definitely a better solution to creating a strong hedge for you, especially in New York City when, where we have so, such heavy snowfalls. Another plant that I really, really love for winter interest is the American Beautyberry. So the Beautyberry, as you see here, has wonderful purple looking berries. Now they look kind of drab, but uh, earlier in the year, they are just stunning. Uh, purple berries and I like to plant them close with uh, hollies and they just create some playful fun uh, interest in your garden and they're also great sources of food for for birds so why not you can't really tell that there is so much plant life underneath however this entire area is planted with lots of species of native plants including ferns and uh, black-eyed Susan, um, even hibiscus coquineus. But you can't really see them right now because obviously they're covered in snow, but that's not really an issue with native plants because they have, they're so hardy uh, and their roots can withstand such low temperatures that you don't really have to worry about protecting them through the winter. This is one of the main benefits uh, of native plants and why I like to 
advocate for them uh, is because you don't need to worry. So you can just have peace of mind. Once you plant them in the ground, you can pretty much kind of forget about them after the first year. Let's say this guy over here, it looks like it's in, in trouble, but it's really gonna be okay. It's not gonna have any issue at all. This is incredible. I want you guys to see this. So look at the stem over here. This tree, I actually tied it up in the past with this plastic, uh, uh, plastic rope, if you want to call it. Um, it. It usually is all the way up. It's about, I would say, uh, 14 feet tall. Um, and it's now falling all the way down after the storm, but it did not break. I would, I kind of do want to do this right now. Removing all this old snow. And it's already, wow, this is really incredible. Interesting. So in this section of the garden, we have some container uh, gardening and tons of uh, perennial gardening. Who can see here poking through the ground? Um, is this echinacea seed heads over here that are remaining through, through the winter? The seeds are found in this seed heads over here. This one is really, doesn't really have any. This variety is, uh, is called Bikahuna is not the most prolific at uh, reproducing because it's a cultivar. Underneath this uh, ice dome is a uh, Japanese quince. It is not a native plant, but it's quite pretty and it blooms early in the spring. Um, and I wanted to talk to you about a little bit of insulation for, for plants uh, and what types of pots you could use to, to not worry so much about having the, their roots freeze. Um, key to that is really picking the, the right plant from the get-go um, so that so that you don't you don't put a sensitive plant that you're gonna have to worry about it freezing. New York is in zone 6b about. Hardness zones means the temperature that the plant can withstand. So when you're choosing plants for containers for outdoors, uh, always do a little bit of a research. What hardiness zone is this plant good for? And pick plants that are good through hardiness zone five to six. Always try to go a zone lower uh, because that means they can withstand even lower temperatures. The lower the zone, the colder uh, the temperature it can withstand. This is a blue stem grass which is one of my favorite grasses. Uh, it's a native uh, North American grass. Everything has been snowed on so much and these are still like erect, adding so much uh, beauty and interest throughout the winter. Uh, I was actually considering of cutting them earlier in the year to prepare them for the spring because it is a good practice to cut your grasses down uh, so that they grow nice. And we see here, this is an ironweed. We have here echinacea seed pods. This is Veronicastrum virginicum. Really interesting stuff. And pensum. These are all native plants that uh, really add really nice winter interest. And all these, all these little things are seeds hanging on the top waiting to to spread around and multiply. Under this mound, for example, uh, we have a really lovely container that you cannot see that has uh, blue-eyed grass and uh, echinacea in it. If I don't remove the snow from this pot, it's not gonna damage my plants. Again, depending on their winter hardness, uh, or if you have branches that might break, you can remove the snow. But you don't really have to with hardy plants. But, oh, whoa, look at that. <laughs> that, is quite, that is quite a show. So I really wanna focus on this plant for a moment because blue-eyed grass is so underused in New York and in North 
American Garden is in, in general. And as you see, it's really the only evergreen uh, grass that is in the garden right now. So this, this grass um, produces tiny little blue flowers in, in the spring and they are magnets, a magnet for pollinators. Um, and you can very easily propagate it by taking uh, sides of it with a little bit of roots and sticking them into the ground without, without much effort and it will multiply. So this pot is actually a strawberry pot. You know those pots that have the sides hanging so you can plant strawberries and they hang over. And I have transformed it into a blue-eyed grass pot and I'm quite happy about it. This is only a few months old of growth and it's gonna be spectacular in the spring. It's like digging for gold. Look at this. There you go. What a discovery. <laughs> yeah, so this topiary has taken about seven years to be nicely shaped like this. It's one of my favorite things. It is not a native plant, but you know, amongst so many native plants, it's good to have like something of different interest. Diversity is key, you know? You don't have to... So on this side of the garden, there is a hedge of arborvitae that are evergreen. That means that they never shed their leaves and they provide shelter for birds throughout the year. So when in the winter you have no coverage no protection from weather conditions, the birds flock in the evergreens for some protection. Just think about adding evergreens so that you provide that shelter for birds constantly because it's really a shame. We take up so much space with building properties and buildings and we don't give enough back to maintain beauty in our areas. So right now I'm literally standing on the pond of the Fully Garden and in here we have irises growing. I know, where are they? Louisiana irises that very few people know and very few gardens showcase are truly, truly spectacular. One of my favorites is uh, black gamecock. It sounds kind of funny, but it's truly a really deep blue purple color with a yellow center. I encourage you to look it up. Louisiana irises, forget, don't forget that. As we see here on the right, we're having a hedge of, of European hornbeam uh, to create some barriers from the neighbors. And it's really pretty in the spring. There is over 430 species and varieties of plants uh, in and under the snow. Uh, the beauty of North American gardening is, is that you don't always have to see what's happening in the ground to know that the beauty is there. And the beauty of North American gardening is the seasons. You know, you have this desolate land right now and in a couple of months, things are gonna start turning green and then we're gonna have all the flowers. And it's really amazing, you know, to, to just believe in the regeneration and rebirth of all these plants. Uh, you don't always have to have a perfect setting. Uh, this is why native plants are so so important and cool because they are really resilient and We're gonna keep updating you guys with uh, more of this information and showing you these plants throughout the seasons so that we make you turn native Growing native plants. Thank you all for tuning in follow again the North Brooklyn Parks Alliance on their Instagram and See you next time Bye-bye.